Yesu asifiwe. I want to introduce myself. I know we might have visitors. And that is our that is our our mark in Shiloh. Every Sunday we must have visitors. So for our visitors, my name is Beatrice Waithaka, and I'm born again. I'm a member of this church and a daughter in this house. And I want to thank God for our spiritual parents in absentia. Thank God for our bishop and our mom, Pastor Alice. They are ministering at DC Ruaka. Today is their 15th anniversary. And for this, we want to say thank you. You can appreciate the Lord on behalf of Ruaka, DC. Yes. And I want to appreciate my co-pastors, beginning with my son, my son, <laughs> Pastor Brian. Thank you so, so much, Pastor Brian. We've been doing this with Pastor Brian for the last one year. We don't take it for granted. This month, we are one year. We are only one year. Yes, we are only one year. And I want to go straight to the word. This morning, by the grace of God, I want us to redig. We, be, we, we, we redig the whole of this year until next year, by God's grace. And today, we want to redig the well of boundaries. Redigging the well of boundaries. Kuchimbua, visima, viamipaka. We are coming from a place where King David was running away from his son Absalom. It is, there's nothing hurting to us parents when you have a child that is disobedient. And this is what happened to David. You are not the first parents that are in this place. David had a son, his own son, not adopted, his own son. And this son was doing against the will of the father. When David is sitting in the palace, Absalom was sitting at the gate and asking people, where are you going? People would tell him, I want to go and see the king because I have an issue with my, my, I have a court case and I want the king to vindicate for me. But David did not know what the son was doing at the gate. And Absalom won the hearts of people. So nobody could go inside to see the king because they were really sorted outside. And now in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 16, 2 Samuel chapter 16, where we be from verse 5 to 13. The Bible says, as King David came to Bahurim, this, this was King David now running. The tension was so much, and he decided to run away. Running away from who? From his son. King David ran away from his son. At the same point, King David was facing a guilty conscience because he had killed Uriah. You can see where King David was. Now, this is King David running away from his son. And of course, even knew, even Jesus Christ, no, he had, no, all his people were not his, his friends. He had enemies amongst his friends. So King David also had enemies and friends. And now he was running away now from his son together with his friends. And now the Bible says that as King David came to Bahorim, a man came out of the village cursing them, cursing King David and the team that was together with. It was Shimei, son of Gera, from the same clan as Saul's family. Verse 6. He threw stones at the king and the king's officers and all the mighty warriors who surrounded him. Verse 7. Get out of here. These are the ones that Shimei was telling who? David. Get out of here, you murderer. You scoundrel. He shouted at David. Verse 8. The Lord is paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's clan. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last, you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Verse 9. Why should this dead dog cause my, curse my king, my lord the king, Abishai, son of Zeruiah, demanded, let me go over and cut off his head. Verse 10. No, the king said, who asked your opinion, you sons of Zeruiah? If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Verse 11. Then David said to Abishai and to all his servants, my own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse 
for the Lord has told him to do it. First 12. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. Finally, verse 13. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shimei kept pace with them on a nearby hillside, cursing as he went and throwing stones at, at David and tossing dust into the air. Panasifiwe. Can you put yourself in the shoes of David and what, what he went through? Because of this man by the name of Shimei. It's not Jesus, the man of his name was Shimei. Shimei had a tremendous hatred for David because he was from the house of Saul. And if you know one of the verses was saying that you stole the, the, the kingship or the king the kingdom of Saul. And now you have, you have taken it back to your son. So this man was suffering bitterness. And you remember this. The, at this time that what, what was happening, it was 20 years since King Saul died. But she may still hold grudge and bitterness against King David. And I wonder this morning, bitterness that you are holding, for how long have you held that bitterness? How long? These were 20 good years since King Saul died. And Shimei was still holding David because he thought it was King David who killed King Saul so that he can take over the kingdom. And now, not that withstanding, he thought now because you did it, now you're giving it back to your son Solomon. But you ask uh, as the, the Africans, when somebody passes on, you ask, especially if it is your father, what were the last words before he passed on? Do you have a witness in the house? What were the last words? King David, before he passed on, he told his son, my days are almost over, and I want to go the way that nobody comes back, but I want you to watch out two people so that you, your kingdom can stand. Number one, it was Joab. Joab was a, the army commander in the kingdom of King David. But Joab took advantage of the power that he had and killed so many people, including someone by the name of Abner. And that did displease the heart of King David and told him, for you to stand, make sure you wipe these people from your kingdom. The second person is Shimei. And he said, Shimei threw to me rocks. The Bible calls them rocks. I don't know the difference between a rock and a stone. He said, he threw to me rocks. He humiliated me before my warriors. Therefore, for your kingdom to stand, two people wipe them from the face of the earth. And that was Joab and Shimei. And now Shimei, we want to today look at Shimei, leave alone Joab. I'm sure David's heart was broken because of fleeing, fleeing from his son Absalom. And Shimei was causing insult upon injury with cursing David and throwing rocks at him. Put yourself, this is your own son. If you have bitterness against someone, it is often because we misunderstood what someone had said, or we be justified for what this person did or did not do. The bitterness that you are carrying, maybe you misunderstood. Somebody said something, you, must, you misunderstood what, what, what the person said. And now you are carrying bitterness. And yet we are going to heaven. When I saw Sifiwe. But the bottom line is bitterness will destroy you instead of the person you have bitterness against. It's going to destroy you. And we'll see the outcome of the bitterness that Shimei was holding against King David. If you think somebody that you are bitter about will suffer. It is you who will suffer. Because it's like taking poison, expecting me to die. That you're so bitter about evil behavior. This is a warning to us that are living. And I tell you, friends, if she may knew what we know today, he could not have died. We are misusing the grace. And I tell you this morning, that mercies are forever, but grace is for some time. His masses are new every morning. But grace, we are living in the dispensation of grace. And this grace will come to an end. Where will you be? When we study the book of Samuel, it shows that Saul had been dead for 20 years. 
and I don't know. The person who put a heart in you or a wound in you, how long have they, have, have they died? Of how long has it taken since they died? Some of them are dead, some of them are living. But you're still holding to that bitterness. Up to when? You cannot carry Jesus and carry bitterness. You cannot carry Jesus and carry anger. It is only, there's only one seat in your heart. And this seat is either for Jesus or for anger. Either for Jesus or for rage. Either for Jesus or for bitterness. And it is you who has the power to decide who will sit on this seat. Because it is only one. Time had passed and now Solomon the king was on the throne. He decided to send for Shimei. He remembered, before my father passed on, he told me one thing that I get rid of, Joab and Shimei. And in the, in, just write it down, in the book of 1 Kings 2, 8 to 11, it's a long one, but you read at your own time. This time, Solomon remembered that my father had told me, for, for my kingdom to be established, I must make sure I remove Shimei. In the face. But you know, Solomon, as we normally read, is a man of wisdom. He knew, I cannot send for somebody just the way David did to kill Uriah. I must kill this man with a strategy. And because Solomon was wise, he sent for Shemei. And in the book, in the, in the, in, in 1 Kings 2 36, let's look at 1 Kings 2 36. The Bible says, the king then sent for Shimei and told him, build a house here, where? In Jerusalem. To us, Jerusalem, it is salvation. We build a house in salvation. Friends, for us to be secure, for us to make it in this life, we must be born again. Am I talking to somebody this morning? David said, build a house here in Jerusalem and live where? There. Don't build and rent it. Don't build and go to another town, but build it and live there. Get me right. But don't step outside the city to go anywhere else. That is the condition that David gave to Shimei. In the spiritual sense, it wasn't just a physical house for Shimei, but a house of peace. Jerusalem is a, house, is a city of peace. Just like salvation. Jesus Christ, it is the house of peace. Since he had lived in turmoil with bitterness and resentment, that is the kind of life that she may lived. A life of bitterness because of King David and a life of resentment. She may thought that Solomon was going to kill him because of the things he did in the past. But King Solomon told him, build a house here and don't go outside. It goes to show that what we sow, we shall also reap. Today it's about Shemai. Tomorrow it is me. The other day it is you. What you sow, you'll do what? You will reap. In the book of Galatians 6, 7 and 9. Galatians 6, 7 and 9. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. If you you, if you plant beans, you cannot harvest maize. Verse 8. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the spirit will harvest everlasting life from the spirit. Verse 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Jerusalem means peace. But there are conditions. Even in salvation, friends, there are conditions and there are boundaries to keep. You cannot be in salvation, one leg in salvation, the other leg on the, in the world. You must declare and declare your stand. Where can we find you? If you are looking for you, if you can put a Google map, can it bring us where you live. And there are conditions for us when we come to, this, to, 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 to a saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are boundaries that the Lord has given us when we are saved. 
the Holy Spirit in our lives begins his work of sanctification and draws the boundaries or convictions out that we may um, we must live by. You cannot come to my house and be the commander of my house. Yes, you can come to my house, but live under the conditions of my house. Are we together? You don't go to salvation saying, I want to get born again, but I come just the way I am. Yes, come. But with the time, you must change and condone to the rules and regulations of that house. Yes, we go to 1 King 2.37. This is what King Solomon told Shimei. On the day you so much as cross the Kindron Valley, you will surely die. And your blood will be on your own head. How many Kindrons have we crossed as believers? Today, some of us here, we are living with consequences because at some point you cross the Kindron Valley and you went to the other side. But King Solomon was very clear. The day, not the times, but the day you will cross Kindron Valley, you will surely die. Why didn't you, did you tell him you go to prison? I'll put you in jail. But he said, you surely, because his father told him, make sure you wipe Shimei from the face of the earth for your kingdom to be established. Let's continue. Oh, hold it there. When God gives you boundaries, he does so not to punish you, but to protect you and make sure you don't go back into the old lifestyle you were before you got born again. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 23 that the Lord is my shepherd. He cannot be your shepherd when you are in the other kingdom. He can only be your shepherd when you come into his pasture and becomes your shepherd. But for us, we want to be in salvation and on the other side. Friends, the grass might be greener on the other side, but my prayer for you this morning is that let's maintain the boundaries so that the Lord, the Lord can be our shepherd and you not live in regret. Some people meet in church. The saved people, so saved people meet in church. They don't meet in discos. Where do they meet? They meet in church. They don't meet in bus or pubs. They meet in church. Sick people attend night vigil or kesha. They don't go to discos. You cannot be this Friday, uko kwa kesha. If Friday ingine, uko disco. You can't work like that. You are either hot or cold. The Lord is not desperate that he must, lazima awe na want. He's not desperate. You are the one who is desperate because you need eternal life. In the book of Philippians 2, 12 and 13, Philippians. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions. This was Paul. And this was his parting shot before he left the earth. He said, dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Verse 13. For God is working in you. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Not what pleases Kenya. Not what pleases your country. But what pleases him. Because the Lord is after your soul. So that one day, one time, you can live with him. He said in John 14, that he's going to prepare a place. When it is done, he will, you are not the one who's going, but he will come and pick us. So wherever he is, we'll be there. That is our goal, friends. But you cannot be, you can go, go to heaven or share that mansion when your one foot is in the earth, the other one is in the kingdom. It can't work. She may knew what his boundaries were just like. We know what our boundaries are. He knew and he was told the day, the day you cross Kindon Valley, that is the end of you. But as she may, we normally forget. She may have forgot what they agreed with David. Even as you have forgotten, the day you gave your life to Jesus, for those who are born again, you feared sin like the way you fear darkness. But today, you became a friend of the darkness. Where would you are? Let's go to verse 38. First King 2 38. 
She merely replied, he replied to King, King Solomon, your sentence is fair. That comes from the mouth of who? Shimei. Your sentence is fair. Just as you said when you got born again, that I will live for you, Lord. Come rain, come darkness. Come rain, come, come sunshine. I will live for you. And then he said, I will do whatever my Lord, the king, <coughs> commands. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem for a long time. She may agree to the terms that Solomon gave him. After all, here is a man who David could kill on the spot, yet is given another chance. She may knew that he deserved death because of what he did to King David. When Solomon called him, he said, today I am done. But lo and behold, Solomon gave him a choice and a condition that the day you will live Jerusalem, you cross over to Kindle Valley, you'll surely die. How many of us here, we have crossed? And today you live with the consequences because you crossed the Kindle Valley. You enter into your house, there are things that you see in your house, you live on regretting. I wish I never crossed. I wish I never crossed over my boundaries. I wish I maintained my boundaries because consequences, friends, they are automatic. And how many times has the Lord overlooked our rebellion and our sin and given us another chance because of the grace through his son, Jesus Christ. If she may was given another chance, believe you me, he could not have died. But for us, we are given chance after chance. But as I told you as I, as I began, I began, that grace is for some time. Don't sin so that you can go and repent. Grace must, might, might come to an end. But Shimei was not given a chance. He was only given one condition. That the day you will cross over Kidron Valley, you will surely die. A time we make commitment to God, be rest assured, the devil will come at us when everything, with everything that he has. The devil does not know conditions. He knows you. It is you to maintain your boundaries. It is not the devil. The enemy knew what was ready in Shimei's heart. And he knows what is in yours and mine. And he knows just the right button to push to stop us from completing what we agreed to the Lord we will do. So what the enemy does, he comes today, tomorrow, to see if you are seen holding onto the conditions and the vows that you made when you gave your life to Jesus. Let's go to verse 39. First King 2, 39. But in three, you see, but, but qualifies the former sentence. But in three years later, two of Shimei's slaves ran away to King, Ach, to King Achish, son of Maka of Gath. When Shimei learned where they were, when Shimei learned, hold it there. Just hold it there. For three years, the Bible says for three short years, she may lived within the boundaries. He never left Jerusalem. As he had promised David, Solomon, sorry, he never left Jerusalem. For three short years, he lived within boundaries that he agreed to. He was not forced as no one to set his arm to agree. The same case applies to us. Were you forced to get born again? Nobody is able to twist your hand for you to get born again. But you said, I want to leave the world. We normally say that the world behind me, the cross before me. Today, is the cross before you or behind you? No one to set your arm and would you come to, to the altar and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior? It is something that you agreed to. The sermon was preached, and you decided that from today, I want a turn around, 300 degrees turn around. And you said, I am leaving the world and facing the cross. Regardless of who you are or what you have done in the past, God gave you personal conviction to live by, to live by. And you are the only one that can decide to live by them or not. Being in salvation, 
nobody forces you. You can say today, nimechoka na wakovu. Na wende ukakunywe. Utaambiwa kwa baba hutauziwa pombe. No, it, they are there for, for business. Utakunywa, uvute bangi, everything that you desire. So long as you have money. And if you don't have money, you are friends. People that drink friends, you can drink from Monday to Friday without a single coin. They are very generous because they know she's only in the same lot going to hell. So encourage one another. Gath was one of the five cities of the Philistines and the native home of Goriath, where the servants of Shimei went, a town known as Gath. That is where, that is the town of Goriath. In the book of 1 Samuel 17 verse 4, 1 Samuel 17 verse 4, the Bible says, Then Goriath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. This is where King David fought with God. And this is where Shimei's servants went. And this is where Shimei went for the servants. It's like adding injury, adding salt into injury. And that is where Shimei went to bring his servants. The devil knew what was the most important thing to Shemei, and it wasn't, it, and it, it was, it was sure, and it sure wasn't obeying Solomon, which is the same as obeying God. So the enemy knew, I'm going to tell this man where his servants, because I know when he goes for his servants, I'm already, he's already, the catch is already with him. When I was a few in the book of 1 John 2.16, 1 John 2.16, the Bible says, For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. That is what the world offers. A craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this is what happened to Shemei. Let's go to verse, let's continue now. Oh, first Kings 2, 41. So Solomon had, he did what? Did he see? But he had. Solomon had that Shimei had left Jerusalem and had gone to Gath and returned. 42. So the king sent for Shimei and demanded, didn't I? make you swear by the Lord and warn you not to go anywhere else or you surely would surely die and he replied the sentence is fair I will do as you say 43 then why haven't you kept your oath to the Lord and obeyed my command 44 the king also said to Shimei you certainly remember now he's reminding Remember the first time when he called him? He didn't tell him what, he didn't remind him, him what he did. But this time, because he's already in the trap, he told him, the king said to Shemai, you certainly remember all the wicked things you did to my father David. May the Lord now bring that evil on your head. 45. But may I, King Solomon, receive the Lord's blessings and may one of and may one of David's descendants always sit on his th throne in the presence of the Lord. Then, at king's command, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, took Shimei outside and killed him. So the kingdom was now firmly in Solomon's grip. It is very sad. That is the end of Shimei. Because he never lived within the boundaries. What can we learn from the life of Shimei? Number one, Shimei condemned other people's sin, not knowing that it would cause his own life. He condemned King David. But in return, his sins killed him. The second thing is that he broke his promise with Solomon. He was very swift in bringing back his two servants 
from God, not knowing that these two servants will cause his own life. Friends, what have you pegged upon your life? Servants. She may could have remained in Jerusalem all the days of his life until he lives his entire years. But he, the enemy knew that two servants, not even sons, two servants, he could have gotten another servant in Jerusalem. But the enemy knew that he's going to take Shimei out of Jerusalem and take him to Gath. He lost his life at the expense of servants. And this morning, as I cry, the cry of my heart is, and cry for your heart, what can cause you die? What can you exchange your life with? Can you exchange your life with a servant? Servants go and come. You, you hire this one, they leave, you hire another one. But the enemy knew, if this man does not go for the servants, I'm going to lose him. So he made a way for, for, for Shimei to go and bring. And Solomon never knew, but somebody told him. Because I knew, Solomon knew that there are spies all over who are watching over Shemai. If it could be today, Tungesema kuna CCTV. But even those time, there was CCTV. And somebody told Solomon, Shemai has gone to Jagath. Shemai was filled with greed to recover his two servants. Greed makes us forget the word of God. At times, we break the word of God. We try to justify ourselves thinking that we can do partial, disobedience, partial obedience in listening to the word of God. King Solomon knew that this man does not obey me. And he was waiting for that particular time that he knew this man may think I have forgotten. Three years, every short time. Three, even three years, no child has, has, has been taken to school. Three years. And King Solomon knew that I'm watching Shemei. He's going to obey me fully so that he can live in Jerusalem. We must never leave Jerusalem, friends. Life may not be easy in salvation, but grace will carry us through. Solomon commanded Shemei not to leave Jerusalem because remaining in Jerusalem is a way of life. You may say outside, Salvation, there is there's no life outside, outside salvation. Life is in salvation. Because there is happiness and there's protection. The Bible says that the one who watch over us never sleep or slumber. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. When she may live in Jerusalem, he lives. But the moment he left Jerusalem, he died. And I want to happen to you this morning. The moment you live in salvation, you are going to live. The moment you live salvation, you are going to die. Jesus told his disciples, don't leave the, the, the sheep. Stay within the, inside the sheep because outside there is death. And that is what happened to Shemei. Shemei lived for only three years. But the inside man arose and he thought, I can go to Gath or other places to Gath. And he knew David killed Goliath in Gath. But he went to Gath. And out of that, Benaiah was to take him outside and kill him. Self-ruin is a result of self-will. Self-ruin is a result of self-will. In the book of Numbers, as I wind up, in the book of Numbers chapter 12, we read about Miriam and Aaron while they were at yeah, while they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. Let's go to verse 2. They said, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? But the Lord heard them. Now, Moses was very humble more humble than any other person on earth. So immediately, the Lord called to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam and said, go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. So the three of them went to the tabernacle. Then the Lord descended in the pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron and Miriam, he called, and they stepped forward. 
And the Lord said to them, now listen to what I say. If there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions. I would speak to them in dreams. But not with my servant Moses. Of all my house, he is the one I trust. I speak to him face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? The Lord was very angry with them, and he departed. As the cloud moved from above the tabernacle, there stood Miriam, her skin as white as snow from leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, please don't punish us for this sin, for this sin, for we have so foolishly committed. Finally. Let me tell you this, friends. God was not happy about the attack on Moses' character. Notice that God did not kill Miriam, but he punished or disciplined Miriam. God was able to kill Miriam, but he never killed her, but he disciplined her. The Lord may not kill us like Solomon when he crossed boundaries because of his grace, but he will discipline us. Some of us here, we are living in discipline. One day after the other, because you cross the boundaries. But the Lord is saying this morning, that is a forgiving father. Think of the prodigal son. When he left home and went his own ways. When he came back to his senses, the father did not go to look for him. Or less announce in the social media about a lost son. The father knew this son knows the way. And one day, he'll come back home. The Lord is saying this morning, you know the way. You cross the boundaries, but he's saying, I cannot come to you. It is you to come to me. No, the Bible says, call unto me, and I will answer. It doesn't say that I'll call you. No, it is you to call unto the Lord, and he will answer. And when the time was ripe, this prodigal son came back home. But the Bible says that when the father saw him at far end, he went to meet him. The Lord is saying this morning, he wants to meet you. You cross the boundaries. You have really suffered. You have no, no joy. There's no happiness in your life because you know what you did. You crossed the boundaries. But he's saying this morning, if you come, I will receive you back because you know the way, like the prodigal son. You know the way. And this morning, Miriam lived in outside the camp for seven days. She suffered humiliation and shame for seven days outside the camp. But finally, the Lord, because of full of mercies, after the seventh day, she was healed and she went back into the camp. How many of us are living outside the camp? Because we crossed the boundaries? Because of the sin we committed, the Lord is saying this morning, I am here to forgive you and bring you back into the tent. We fall into sin because we want to prove something. What are we proving? What are you proving, friends? You have never taken, you want to go and take bialafu? Walo wamekunyo wamefanya nini? You don't have to prove anything because Jesus proved everything on the cross on our behalf. As I wind up, a man by the name of Charles Pajon said this, no matter how dear you are to God, if any kind of sin is harbored in your spirit, he will whip it out. So how many of us this morning, we are on the line of being whipped? The Lord is whipping us every day because he's not whipping you. He's whipping the sin that is in you. Is it anger? Is it pride? The Lord is whipping that sin in us because he loves you more than he loves sin. Shall we pray? And when every eye is closed and heads bow, you are here. The first thing to do so that you can live within the boundaries is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior so that he can watch over you, he can shepherd you, and can make you 
among his flocks. Are you here? You're not born again. And you're saying this morning, I am fed up with this life. I need a shepherd. Cross over. And the Lord will make boundaries for you. Are you here? You're not born again. Webe huja okoka. Na masha ime kusonga. You have tried everything in this life. You have tried to prove everything. But the Lord is saying this morning, don't prove anything. I proved everything for you on the cross. You are here, you are not born again. And you are desiring this morning to come over to this other side that the Lord is going to watch over you and you are going to maintain the boundaries. If you lift up your hand, I will pray with you. And the Lord will bring you on this other side so that he can be your shepherd. The second category, oh, just that my brother, thank you, stand, stand up on your feet, and you can come over. I think there are ministers here. You are there, you are saying, you want a new change in your life. You want to get born again. You are there, you want to join my brother. You are saying you have come to the end of yourself, end of this life, and you want to get born again. Send out this life to the owner. It is, this life is not yours. Hii maisha ni ya mwenyewe. Unataka kumrudishia mwenyewe hii maisha. Uko pale na uja okoka. Ungependa kuokoka. We are waiting for you. Tuna kugojea. Because the Lord wants to, to rescue you from that kind of life that you've been living. The second category, you are here. And you know for sure, when every eye is closed, I said we close our eyes, when every eye, is, you know, you cross boundaries. And today, you are living in consequences. The Lord is saying, he wants to bring you back where you belong. You are there. If you can raise up your hand, we'll pray together. Father, we thank you. And we bless you. What a loving father you are. Regardless of our sinful nature, dear, you still love us. We want to thank you for your grace this morning, Jehovah Father. This far it has taken you to your Lord. And the remaining part is all about your kin and glory. We send ourselves to you, to your Father. Help us to be watchful to your Father, that we maintain our boundaries in the name of Jesus Christ. So that, dear Father, when our time of leaving this earth, Jehovah Father, shall come, we will not die like Shemei. Thank you for giving us the grace. Grace to carry us through. Grace, dear Father, oh God and our Master, to remind us that you are sojourn us on this world. We want to honor you. We want to thank you this morning. We bless you for your word, dear Father. Oh God and our Master, embrace us like the prodigal son. Embrace us to your Father. Make us feel home because that is where we belong. Help us to tarry in Jerusalem because outside, when you pass through the kingdom of reality, your Father, you shall surely die. Help us to remain and to tarry in Jerusalem. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.